Yo, what's good? Hit that thumbs up button. This is a quick one. I ain't even been on here like that lately. Um, I was watching the uh, Sunday night football game last night between the Pats and the Bucks. Good game. Really intense. Uh, Richard Sherman now plays for the Tampa Bay Bucks. He got signed on Wednesday. Practice three days. They've had to put him out there early because they got so many injuries in the backfield and the secondary. The game starts and Richard Sherman is starting and <laughs> Michelle Tafoya from NBC, uh, NFL in, on NBC. And I don't want to just dump her under the bus because she's an employee. She works for them. She's a reporter. Someone told her to do this. And I said it to myself and some people on Twitter also. I said, don't you think it's a little classless and unnecessary that they had to keep bringing up Richard Sherman's legal history? Now, this is a man who graduated from Stanford College with honors, never had any. He's, he's probably an NFL Hall of Famer when it's all said and done. Never had any off the field issues his entire career until this summer. Um, and despite those issues, him driving under the influence, reckless endangerment, uh, resisting arrest, domestic violence related counts of criminal trespass. With all that being said, as bad as that sounds, nobody got hurt. Uh, he apologized several times. Uh, everyone seen the surveillance video of him yelling outside the house, trying to break into his in-laws house. It was his most embarrassing, humbling moment of his career. Uh, Sherman, eventually, they say Sherman tried to grab a firearm from an officer before leaving uh, and, and traveling to his wife's mother's house and all of this stuff. Uh, just one of them incidents. He was drunk. He was tripping. He had a moment. Um, but the thing is, with, with black players, you could, be, you could be a great player. But when you have one off the field issue, they're going to make sure everyone remembers it to the day you die. They are never going to let this go. And I just thought it was real unnecessary and classless. It's a football game. We're here to watch football and be entertained. I don't care about his legal issues. I already know about that. We all do. No one watching that game last night did not know about this. We did not need to have it rehashed. You know, I believe in giving people second chances. Who doesn't? You know, now with white players, it's different. When a white player screws up, it's not really the same. Big Ben had rape allegation charges two, 20, what, 10 years ago. He got four games. They never talked about it. They do not bring up Big Ben Roethlisberger's rape allegations at all. And if you just started watching football maybe five years ago, you probably didn't even know about it because they don't talk about it. They bury that under the dirt like a cat when they shit. But from Antonio Brown... I was arguing with fans online yesterday. He shouldn't even be in the league anymore. I'm like, why? The man had all his charges dropped. He did his community service. He did his uh, his, his therapy, just like Sherman. What, what, what do you want? You know what I mean? Like, it's like black players don't get us. Even when they get a second chance, it's like some of these white folks and white media, they, it's like they're so, they, they can't stand to see a brother get a second chance. But white players screw up and they get second chances all the time. And then they're, they're, their dirt gets erased. I mean, it's like they erased Big Ben's entire legal history. And that wasn't the first time Big Ben had been accused of that also. Just saying. So it's like, if you're going to do this, do it with both guys. But like I said, NFL, they have the longest offseason out of any sport. They got 1,300 players. They always have guys that get into trouble in the offseason. You got young men with millions of dollars probably just sitting around, not being as constructive as normal because they're not they're off. Guys get in trouble in the offseason. NFL, it, that happens with the NFL more than anybody. Uh, but I did think that was real low of uh, NBC to keep to bring that up I mean, during the broadcast. I'm like, okay, we get it. Sherman had issues. But damn, you know, he's going to drag his name for the rest of his career? And this might have some impact on his Hall of Fame credentials. It might have some, an impact on that because they're funny like that. Now, Big Ben just broke the record for 400 passing yards 400, uh, 400 touchdowns yesterday. Do you think they're going to stop him from going to the Hall of Fame first ballot <laughs> despite him having those rape allegations and charges? No, you know, but I bet you Antonio Brown won't be a first ballot Hall of Famer because of the things that he did, even though he didn't rape anybody allegedly. Uh, but yeah, I just I, I just get sick and tired of the, the the mistreatment of black players. It's like, yeah, it's all good when they can run routes, catch footballs, throw footballs, dunk, you know, shoot threes. But as soon as they get into a, a little issue, a lot of fans, uh, a lot of white fans, and I think they're, they're being mesmerized by white media. They just, oh, no, so-and-so is an animal. He's this, he's that. He can never. 
I mean, it wasn't like Richard Sherman did a Greg Hardy and he was beating up his girlfriend or nothing like that. I mean, this wasn't no, yeah, no one was hurt in any of this. You know, it was embarrassing more than anything. You know what I mean? He had a bad night. He was drunk. He was tripping. You know, and like I said, Sherm came out there and for a guy who's 33 coming off the street who had three days of practice, he played all right. I know people say he got burnt, but I mean, he didn't give up no more than 20 yards of pass the whole game. He kept everything in front of him. He had seven tackles. He played pretty solid. Uh, so, you know, the Bucks won. That was another reason I was pulling for him. I was like, I can't believe this bitch going to sit there and bring up this man legal history during a damn football game. I'm like, really? Did y'all do that with Kobe? And I've seen them do that with Kobe when Kobe played also. They were bringing up Kobe's, you know, the, the Denver situation, the Colorado. They kept bringing that up too. People, Kobe wasn't always this beloved figure, you know. And Kobe had that down period for those few years post Shaq, the, uh, leading up to post Shaq, the whole Colorado thing. They were bringing that up all the time on Kobe, you know. So it's like they do this with all of the top elite black players, and it's real sickening sometimes, and it's unnecessary. And NBC, fuck y'all for that. Thank you.